Let's get right into discussing ANOVA or analysis of variance. So ANOVA is a special case of regression, and actually next week when we talk about regression, I'll show you that that's true. What it allows us to do is unlike t-tests where we can only compare two groups to one another, it allows us to compare multiple groups or multiple categories simultaneously against one another. And so the best way for you to understand how this works is to actually take a look at and do this in SPSS. And the first thing we're going to do is say, let's figure out the price paid for a car in their same data set that we've been working with as a function of marital status. Now, before we do that, I just want to show you that marital status actually has more than two levels. And one way to do that is to look at the frequency. So we can go to analyze, descriptives, frequency, and we don't need these guys anymore, but we do need marital status that in fact that there are five different levels, single, married, widowed, divorced, and separate, and we have different frequencies for each one. So if we wanted to know if any one of them was different from any other, what we could do is run a whole bunch of t-tests comparing single to married, single to widowed, single to divorce, single to separated, married to single, married to divorce, and so on. You get the idea. That's a lot of work. Instead, what we could do is run an ANOVA, and it's going to do that all for us. So how do we do it? We go to Analyze, General Linear Model, univariate. I know that doesn't say ANOVA, but this is going to give us our analysis of variance. And so if what we want to do is identify the price paid, which is the variable actual, so I'll say ACT, there it is, that's our dependent variable. That's what we wanted to predict, what we wanted to say is different potentially or not. And under the fixed factor, we want to put the thing we wanted to group, so the different values, which is marital. Now we actually want to ask for a couple more things. Under options, we want to ask for the means for every level of marital, which we do by clicking over here, as well as under display, we want the descriptive statistics and we'll see what that looks like. And we want one more thing. Under post hoc, we want a post hoc test for marital and specifically we want the LSD test. Now this is not some sort of psychedelic drug. LSD stands for least significant differences. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us every pairwise comparison possible and I'll show you that as well. So we click continue, we click okay, and we get a whole lot of output. So let's start at the top. So first thing it does is it tells us the different levels that we have and the number of cases in each of those values. We have descriptive statistics that tell us the mean value paid for each one of these categories, the standard deviation, and again, the sample size. And most importantly, we have this test of between subjects effect. This is the thing we care most about. And what you see here is it says marital. This would say whatever the variable is that we were testing, in this case, it's marital. And if we move over to the right, we find that the significance of this test is very much below 0.05, it's 0.000. So what this tells us is that at least one value is different from one other value. So if we come back up here, we say at least one of these values, maybe married, is different from at least one of the other values, maybe single. That's all we know. We actually don't know which ones are different from which one. For that, we need to move down a little bit further. So on our way down, we see these estimated marginal means, which again gives us the means and the standard errors this time instead of standard deviations and the confidence intervals. But what we're really interested in is down here, it's this LSD table. What this does is it makes every single pairwise comparison. So rather than just knowing that one value is different from some other value, we can expressly say things like single is different from married. And I say that with statistical certainty because that value is very low. Single is not different from divorced. And I can say that because the p-value of 0.316 is above 0.05. And I can continue playing this game and looking at every single pairwise comparison here. One of the nice things is SPSS will put a little asterisk next to every single value that actually has statistical significance. Now the LSD test may not be the right test to make all. Now the LSD test may not be the right test to make all of these pairwise comparisons. And take a moment to think about why that might be. If you recall our conversation about thinking about data analysis, you might remember that if we make lots and lots of tests, at some point we might just get lucky. And so by doing this LSD comparison, that's exactly what we're saying. We're saying, give me every possible test, and if any of them come back as significant, well, nice, I'll report that, and that'll be exciting and interesting. But that's a problem. 
And so one of the ways in which we can correct for that problem is to apply a statistical correction known as a correction for a test of multiple comparisons. And there are a number of these corrections that we could make. Rather than running the LSD test, for instance, we could run the Bonferroni test. Here's Mr. Bonferroni who invented the test, the Chaffe test, and here's Mr. Chaffe. And of course, we can run the Tukey test. Wait a second, that's not Mr. Tukey. That's my cat who is named after this gentleman, John Tukey. And what these tests do is they statistically say, I'm giving myself extra chances to be statistically significant. And so therefore, let's adjust that. Let's basically take the p-value and let's increase it a little bit based on how many tests we're actually making. The Bonferroni test is probably the most conservative one, and it's the one that I'll show you right now. So if we go back to our data set and we say analyze, general linear model, univariate, everything's still the same, and under post hoc, instead of LSD, we're going to say LSD, and we're also going to run the Bonferroni. Now I'll just show you these so we can have the comparison on the same screen. Typically, we wouldn't run the LSD at all. So if I run that, I have the LSD up here and the Bonferroni down here, and what we find is that they're actually quite different. For example, under the LSD test, separated versus widowed is in fact considered statistically different from one another. But under the Bonferroni test, separated versus widowed is in fact not different from one another. What that's taken into account is the fact that I ran a lot of tests and I should be penalized for running those tests. This Bonferroni adjusted comparison matrix is much more appropriate and much more statistically sound. And it's also the one that you should probably be using most of the time. Let's take a look at the first question. Does the ease of use of the website vary with education level? So we go to analyze, general linear model, univariate. We say ease of use. Does that vary with education level? We want to have all of our descriptives. And we also want to run the post hoc Bonferroni tests. OK? So we run that. And first things first, we look at our test of between subjects effects. And we see that educate is, in fact, uh oh, not statistically significant, meaning that we cannot reject the null that all of these are in fact the same, that every single level of education had the same evaluation for ease of use. At this point, we stop. We don't need to continue examining anything because all of these are actually the same. Does the extent of research done on the web vary with income level? So again, we go to analyze, general linear model, univariate, and we wanna say, does the extent of research, research, vary as a function of income? And as before, we're going to go to options. We're going to ask for the income means. We're going to ask for descriptive statistics. And in the post hocs, we're going to ask for a post hoc test for income. And we'll run the Bonferroni correction. So we run this. We get a whole bunch of statistics. But most critically, we can take a look over here, which is the test of between subject effects. And we see there is, in fact, an effect of income, suggesting that the extent of research varies as a function of income level. So if we scroll down to our Bonferroni test, we can actually look at all of our pairwise comparison. And there are quite a few differences. For example, those who make $35,000 to $50,000 use the internet for research differently than those who earn $80,000 to $95,000, but not differently from those who earn $95,000 to $110,000. And you can examine this table and see all the different comparisons that are available. So in sum, ANOVA is a wonderful tool for allowing us to make multiple comparisons across many groups quickly and efficiently.